being a Broadway performer is pretty cool. And a lot of hard work. Getting there is even harder. We're going to tell you all about it. I'm Adrian Walker. And I'm Austin Cook. Welcome to 32 Bar Cut. Hello, welcome to 32 Bar Cut Broadway Banter. I'm Adrian Walker. I'm Austin Cook. And today we are talking about the benefits and the not so much benefits of being a non-union actor. Uh, we both have had our stint as non-union actors. And so we're just going to talk about what that was like, what we learned from it, and the benefits of being a non-union actor. So That's right. Um, I was going to say, too, that on this show, we're, t- we're basically, we're, we just want to give you our opinions of stuff. Like, yeah. this is our perspective. Yeah. We're not trying to say that we're right all the time and that we know everything and this is the definitive truth about Broadway and how to do it. This yeah. is just kind of our perspective and our story. So maybe you can relate to it and get some benefit out of it, or maybe it doesn't apply to you. I don't know. Yeah, that's our little disclaimer. We are uh, we are definitely, we consider ourselves professionals, but we are not experts <laughs> and our journey is our journey. Are and any of us experts? I don't know. We're all just continuing to learn, right? Yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. So um, this is what no one really tells you about being a non-union actor. First off, let me say I have great memories of being non-union. You do? Yeah. Okay. Like? Like, I just mean it was like a great time in life. It's like that early beginning of your career. You're just excited to get like in a show. Untainted. Yeah, (laughs) but also it's kind of embarrassing and cringy when you think about some of the stuff you did. Mm -hmm. Like for me, one of the benefits, well, I guess we'll get to this, but like, let's just start from the beginning. What is the first benefit of being non-union for you? Well, I think the first benefit is the potential for all the work. Because you can work in union houses and non-union houses as a non-union actor, especially regionally. Mm -hmm. So uh, regionally, these houses, they're going to, these union houses are going to have a number of union contracts and a number of non-union contracts for every show that they do. Which means that as a non-union actor, you get access to those non-union contracts. Which means that you can work at these union houses, get to learn the the ropes, Mm -hmm. but then also do non-union work. You can do your storefront theaters, your community theaters, whatever, you know, whatever production you want to do. Maybe your friend is writing something and you want to be in it. You are not beholden by the union to not do that work because you are non-union. That's true. You can work anywhere you want, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, there's freedom in that. And there's a lot of freedom in that. And Uh, That's definitely a benefit. And also, I don't know if we're going to talk about this later, but with that, getting to work in more houses comes getting to work in more roles. Oh, absolutely. So my experience was when I was doing non-union work and I worked at a union house, I was always the ensemble and covering a principal. But when I was doing non-union work and I worked in a non-union house, I was usually a principal, which means that I'm building my resume and I'm getting those principal credits on there, but without the pressure of going up against other union actors vying for the same part that have more experience. Maybe they worked at that theater. They are friends with the director. The director is comfortable with them. They're always going to get the work over someone that the director doesn't know and hasn't worked with. Yeah, those principal roles. So this is probably one of the biggest points is that you get the opportunity as as a non-union member, Mm -hmm. you get the opportunity to do bigger roles than maybe you would get to do if you're in an equity situation. Again, because you're competing against uh, a lot of seasoned actors. Yes. So you get to be a big fish in a little pond, Mm -hmm. potentially. So I remember story time. Story time. I remember one of the... Uh, one of my uh, first, it wasn't the first, but one of the first um, acting jobs I got in Chicago, I played Dr. Manette in Tale of Two Cities, the musical. What? Yes, I played Dr. Manette. Now, on Broadway, Dr. Manette was played by, I don't remember, but someone substantially older than 20-whatever-year-old yeah, yeah, Austin. Yeah, I was really young, playing basically the father of like the lead woman who was, you know what I mean? It was like, but you're a baritone and you're tall, right? So that I was makes, tall, it skinny, and the role was supposed to be tall, skinny, but oh, so because I'm non-union, 
I got to play a role that I had no business playing, but I learned a lot because mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm learning character acting. I was learning how to play an old man, whether or not I did it well. That's another discussion. <laughs> Let's not get into that. But you're, you're working on those skills is yeah. the point, right? You're learning skills that maybe you wouldn't get to do if you're always just cast as yourself. Yeah. And I think, too, it's good to note that when you are working as a non-union actor in a union house, most likely you'll be covering a principal because that is the, the non-union track. So they have these contracts. Yeah. These union contracts are all going to their principal actors, which means that the non-union contracts, which are going to be covering the principal tracks, are going to go to non-union actors, which means that instead of, if, if you were union and you didn't book that principal track, you probably won't be in the production at all. But if you're non-union and you didn't book that principal track and go straight to union, then you'll most likely get to be in the production and just cover the track. That's a great point. And I want to spend a second to talk about, because I don't know if everybody knows this, but it's not, I used to think that it was just equity houses, union houses, mm -hmm. and non-union houses, yeah. that it was black and white. Mm -hmm. It's not. There are, equity does have contracts for houses where they can hire a couple of roles and then everybody else is non-union. Yeah. So there are these hybrid houses. There are different levels. Yeah, there's tiers. different tiers, tiers, they call it. Yeah. So I, I am actually an ensemble member of, a, of a, a theater in Chicago that is an equity theater, but they're very small. You may not... You, so they take a lot of pride in that because they're willing to pay mm -hmm. all of the insurance, the matching, the 401k, all of that, those contributions to be an equity house. But then there are also houses that are small that maybe can only afford two equity contracts. And then the rest of the show is non-union. So I just think it's important for all of you non-union people out there to know that it's not just Broadway equity houses yeah. and not union. There are hybrid houses yes. where you can kind of get in. And that really, I don't know if we're going to talk about that today. Yeah, but, we are. But we'll get into, like, that really is the journey. Of the how transition. To become, is that kind of those transitional houses. Yeah, because you want to make sure that you have a transition. Um, the non-union theater community and the union theater community are going to be different because the union actors cannot work in non-union theater. So it's best for you to transition into that pond so that you're meeting these actors, you're meeting these directors, but you're not quite fully there yet, just so that you can build up your resume, bolster up your resume, and so that when you do cross over, you can still continue to work. Um, and we'll talk about that in our next video when we talk about the pros and cons of being a union actor. But I wanna talk about building your resume and getting comfortable on stage as a union actor. Yeah, getting comfortable on stage is a big one because this is, again, this is specific to us, but there's a lot of people that have our experience as well. I, I think, I guess what I'm saying is that we didn't go to school for theater. Yeah. So we were very green. We didn't know a lot of things that a lot of our fans and uh, of the show that watch it, a lot of, um, there, we have a lot of fans that went to school for this. Maybe they mm -hmm. knew since junior high, they've been doing the musical. Yeah. They've been doing the blocking, the lighting, the special. They know all of the, the uh, terminology, all the terminology, mm -hmm. all the, you know, all that stuff. We didn't have that experience. You know, I had musical training, but I didn't have theatrical training. So for us, non-union was the time where we got We got all, to mess up, but we got to learn. We got and to ask learn. Questions and what is downstage? What is upstage? Yes. Like, it seems basic, but if you didn't grow up in that world, it was a you lot of learning. Learning like, about tech week, learning what happens. The numbers learning. on the stage. And yeah, I remember my first tech week. Actually, my first job was at a union house, but I was young enough that everyone gave me a pass for all of my mistakes. Yeah. But um, I remember everyone saying, oh yeah, Tech Week's coming up. And I was like, what is Tech Week? Please tell me, why is everyone so up in arms in Tech Week? And it's just a, it's a really tough time and it takes all of your energy and you gotta plan your meals so that you don't spend too much money on lunches and it's well, 12 hour days. That's the personal stuff, but there's a lot of technical stuff in yeah. tech week too. Like when the director says to stop, it's not a time to walk back over to your friend and talk. Yeah, and chit chat. You have to stop because the light is, they're yeah. trying to light the show, you dumb dummy. Yeah. I didn't know these kind of things. So I'm making those green mistakes and mm -hmm. looking like a dumb dumb. 
But again, I wasn't embarrassing myself in front of a Broadway director yeah. at a union house because I'm in a little black box non-union house learning mm -hmm. the ropes, learning what all this stuff means yeah. so that later I can <laughs> You can make your stuff. blunders. Yes. Unfortunately, you can make, and fortunately, you can make your blunders at these non-union houses and you can make your blunders while you're still non-union. The thing is, when you go over to equity, you are considered a professional actor and there's not too much room for these blunders anymore. There, by becoming an equity member, you are uh, stating that you understand what it means to be a professional actor, and you don't need to be told or taught anything else. And that yeah. that runs the that runs the gamut of knowing what it means to have understudy uh, responsibilities and to be on time, and all kinds of penalties you have if you don't follow the guidelines. So. But we're not talking about union yet. We're just talking about the benefits and pros and cons of being non-union. Yeah, on Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, we will be talking about unions. So stay yeah. tuned for that video on Wednesday. Come back for that, and we'll be talking about the other side of all yeah. of this uh, non-union talk. And we'll be in the chat, as always, answering your questions if they come up, if they arise while we're talking. <laughs> so what's another benefit of, of being non-union? I think networking. Yeah, networking. Networking, because... Uh, think yeah. about it. We're all starting from different places, right? But what if, you know, you're meeting the next Lynn Benwell Miranda in your non-union job and you vibe and you you were a part of his first show or her first show and now they are a big time director somewhere else, they're going to remember you, you know? So at every level in your career, no matter how small, just remember that you should always be networking and building relationships and building those foundations and being your best self uh, so that you can keep those connections and people remember you in a good light. <laughs> yeah, definitely networking is a big one because mm -hmm. a lot of the directors, um, a lot of these non-union theaters in, in the big cities, and I'm sure some in the small cities too, I'm just not as familiar in the regional houses, these directors, the artistic directors of these companies, a lot of them are Broadway veterans yeah. that used to be actors on Broadway, yep. used to be choreographers, dancers, and for whatever reason, to start a family and to, to settle down and where their Passion family project, is, whatever it is, yeah. they've moved back to a different place and they're starting a Broadway kind of culture in their theater. So these are, you know, very professional houses. There's nothing not professional necessarily about a non-union house. Yeah. So I say that to say the network, the networking you're doing at these houses, a lot of these people have connections to Broadway, if that's your goal, mm -hmm. or have connections to whatever your goal might be. But um, just because it's non-union doesn't mean that it's not on the journey to Broadway. You may be meeting people and not to mention your fellow peers, your colleagues that yeah. you're working with. You may all grow together. How many times have we heard that story? I was just talking to a composer of a Broadway musical a couple of days ago, and he was uh, telling me that the people he did shows with, yeah. he's still writing with. And they used to do like little like acapella arrangements and like do little plays, like little non-union plays. Mm -hmm. And now they're on the same people, but they're on the Broadway level when working on Broadway shows. So it's just, that's how it all starts. That's which is how great. it works. You really build those connections and, and the love of the craft yeah. and try to take that to to the corporate world, level. the corporate theater, which is Broadway. So. Yeah, I, um, I remember watching this interview with Issa Rae and maybe you all have seen it where she talked about, and if you don't know Issa Rae, you should. Issa Rae, star of Insecure, got her start on YouTube as yeah. Awkward Black Girl. She's awesome. amazing. Anyway, um, so Issa Rae did this interview where someone had asked her, or she gets the question a lot about um, folks are reaching out to her because she's so, I guess, personable. You know, you feel like you know her, yeah. but people reach out to her asking her for opportunities and everything. And she just comes from the school of reach sideways. You know, grab the people on your level and you all come up together yeah. rather than trying to reach up. And I think that's what you're speaking to is that when you're doing these this non-union work and you're making these connections, you have the potential to reach sideways yeah. and, and network on your own level and come up together. Yeah. And I feel like that is the way it is done. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many examples of that. And, yeah. and we I have that in my own life. You have that like all of our peers that we've. Like I met in, yeah. in the Chicago world, they, they've stayed with us this whole time. Building yeah. and growing together and leveling up together. Yeah. Um, I think another pro too is that if you are unfamiliar with the 
uh, theater work lifestyle, being a non-union actor gives you a chance to kind of step your toe in that without fully committing. So you can probably most likely keep your day job or your survival job because your uh, rehearsal hours most likely will be working around everyone's schedules because they don't pay enough <laughs> for you to live off of. So they're going to work around your schedules. You're probably going to rehearse at night or on weekends. And um <clears throat> That way you can get used to what that lifestyle is like without fully committing. If you're in a union job, most likely you'll be working from 10 to six for rehearsals, mm -hmm. which means forget about your day job, forget about your survival job at Starbucks. Um, yeah. So I, I do think that that's helpful too. That's a great point because you will need that survival job. So that's why you, most non-union houses that, that we've worked at are more flexible. Yeah. Um, with that because they know people have day jobs to pay the bills and then they're not paying you what you know very much yeah you really i mean it's just not a livable wage i've i've worked jobs that paid a stipend of uh five hundred dollars i've worked jobs that paid a stipend of three hundred dollars i've worked jobs mm -hmm. that paid 98 dollars a week uh and yeah. maybe like 100 112 i think when you were performing um also you're probably not going to get a full performance week also, didn't you work a job where you made tips? Yes. Uh, yeah. At Theo Ubiquay. Yeah. In Chicago. We worked for tips. We worked for tips. Dinner theater. We worked for tips. So that's the thing. That would that would never happen in an equity house. Right. So you just have to keep in mind that non-union houses have uh, creative ways of paying their actors, but there are also no rules. So you just have to keep in mind, hey, I'm signing up to do this show. It may not align with the rules that I want, but... I think that this role is worth it, or I think this opportunity is worth it, and I'm willing to take take mm, an, a little bit of an L so that I can get something on my resume. And I wanted to have a quick disclaimer too, to say that I, when I speak on this episode, I'm speaking to non-union houses that are of a smaller nature mm -hmm. or of like a storefronts, community theater, like, to, like I'm not speaking to corporate non-union, like no. networks, tours, and all of that. I'm not a fan. I don't believe in that. No, um, neither of us. So we're do. not it's, speaking to that. We're not talking about touring companies that because that promote Broadway uh, claims, but they're not union, and those actors advantage. are mistreated. They're they taking advantage. Truck and bus. Actors. They, they, they. We're not talking about that. We're, not we're mainly that. our our experience is from Chicago theater and Chicago storefront theaters, regional theaters. Um, that's and, that's what we're talking about. And the reason there's a difference for me is because of the the money. On these non-union theaters that we work for, they're struggling for money. They're mm -hmm. trying their best to fundraise. They're trying to get butts in the seats. They're trying what they can. They're not taking advantage of the artist per se. You, you know, they they pay nothing. Most of the time, they're embarrassed by it. They know it. They're just trying to make a show happen. Make art. Yeah. Whereas you have these big corporate non-union things that are like, we don't need unions, and and yeah, you know, they're just taking advantage, and they're greedy. They're making a lot of money. The so, audience thinks that they're getting that. a union show. Yeah. Most of the time, the audience doesn't Same even know. Same ticket prices. Yeah. yeah. So that that we are not talking just about doing. Be that kind of work. And, and um, yeah. I think you should, for any kind of tour, you should always ask if it's union. And if they say no, you should ask why. <laughs> now, finally, that just reminds me of the last point of that is we're not judging. So if you're non-union and you do those tours, there's no judgment there. We're not judging you as a person like that you're ha that you're going on that tour. No, and taking we're really that judging the production We're companies. just judging the, the, the management. The we, we don't yeah. believe in the management of that. But if you get your opportunity and that's right for you, we yeah. support you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Always supporting the actors. So back on topic, what are the other things that are uh, benefits of being a non-union? I think for me personally, and I don't know if y'all can identify with this or you can identify with this, but I felt more likely to and, and more uh, encouraged to take creative risks. Yes. In these non-union houses. And that's sad. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but I just felt like, uh, well, what do I have to lose? They're barely paying me. I'm going to do something outlandish and yeah. see if it works. No, I know where that comes from. And that is mm -hmm. true. That um, That's one of the things we're trying to change. About yeah. Broadway, in particular Broadway, but just corporate theater where, you know, you we like want you it to risks. feel artistic. Yeah. You know, you were talking, that reminds me of uh, when you were talking about John Doyle mm -hmm. and working with him. 
great director, but you said he is a perfect example of that. He takes risks. He does what yeah. he feels. He does the artistic choice. Yeah. And if it means the producers are like, no, I think we should find somebody else. He's then like, he's like, okay, great. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> he's and he's, he's not brilliant. bothered. He's not bothered by it. So I thought that was a cool example of someone who is doing that, who yeah. feels free enough to always take the uh, creative um, road or the, the artistic approach. Yeah, he he's about the work. He's about the journey and not necessarily ever. A, he never feels like a work is completed. And I feel like that's an amazing place to be as a director, but maybe like a tumultuous place too because because the nature of it is that the work has to have some completion for you to present but um my my time with john i just found that he'd much rather rehearse all the time and that be the work and that be the end of it so yeah so i think in summary of our non-union video about the benefits it just yeah. seems like with non-union you have the potential for just more work right yeah because there are i mean just because it cost money to be in the union, to be a union house, there are more non-union houses, which means there's more non-union work. So you can work all the time. Um, you may run yourself ragged, but you could work all the time. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities out there in non-union. If you're finding you're not doing what you want to do, say you want to be a leading man and you're like, I'm just not making as leading man. You can always just knock yourself down a rung and find yeah. a smaller house or a smaller theater. that and doesn't, you, you can know, be the title character. just keep going down, keep going down <laughs> yeah. until you get to community theater, you know, that really needs that leading man. And then maybe you can play the leading man. So I, you can yeah. just keep kind of knocking yourself down to the roles you want to really get. Yeah. And then just build yourself back up and keep trying to prove that you did it on this level and this level. And that that is exactly what happened for me, for instance. I started at the bottom, which mm -hmm. if you haven't seen my story, you can watch that. We'll link it uh, at the top here. But that's how it happened. Yeah. It was the bottom rung and then getting to the next stair and then the next stair and the next stair and the next stair. And it took a long time, but it is possible for you to do that same journey as well. Um, and then if you have a different journey, which is you knew you wanted to do it, you went to school and then got right out of school, your equity house, that's awesome. Yeah, so, definitely. What What's next? Do we need to talk about the cons? We should talk about a few of the cons. So the cons, one con we already talked about is the pay. That the pay is not livable, never will be livable. If it was livable, then why wouldn't they just be a union house, right? Um, so the pay can be a bit rough. Um, you're also not going to get an opportunity to... Um, enjoy breaks uh, like you would very structured breaks in an equity house. Um, the stage manager would call the breaks and everything. With a, with a non-union house, they do try to do that, but they don't have to. And there's nothing regulating it. Yeah, most non-union, in our experience, most non-union houses try to emulate the equity rules. Mm -hmm. That just seems to be kind of our experience, but they don't have to. They don't so have that's to. that's the difference. And there's really no checks and balances. If you have a grievance or anything like that, there's no union that you can uh, uh, report them to. You can just take it up with management or choose to leave the production if you have a, a, a really strong issue. Yeah. And um, what, what about costumes, too? Costumes. I have experienced be... uh, bringing my own clothing um, for costumes and, and figuring out, okay, what, what works for this scene? I've experienced uh, costume building together <laughs> and using thrift store finds. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, and that's been my experience with non-union houses. I only did may maybe, I think, three or four non-union productions. And then everything else I did as a non-union actor was at a union house. So I got all the union perks. Yeah. Um, but when you are non-union and you work at a union house, you they are allowed to fudge the rules a little bit with you. So I was called extra early for dress uh, costume fittings, whereas my equity uh, friends that were in the same production, they couldn't call them before 10, you know? So it's, it's good to take those things in mind, but you still get the other perks of getting a freshly made costume and breaks and dinner breaks and um, you just won't be able to vote on those things. That's a big con is all the rules that and there's a thick for every contract you're on for equity. There's a thick packet of rules that yeah. the uh, producer has to follow. And that's a big one for non-unions because things like dressing rooms, you know, you may or not. You know, with equity, you have to have different dressing rooms for different people. You have to put all these requirements on the conditions of the dressing room, bathroom, showers. There is a really funny uh, series uh, on Instagram. It's this duo, uh, Lenisa and Danielle. 
and they oh, they yeah. run hashtag booked yeah. and they have this fun little um series on when they talk about non-union work and non-union dressing rooms so if you haven't checked them out on instagram and you're an actor please follow at hashtag booked they are hilarious yeah. and it's hashtag books all spelled out whatever yeah hilarious yeah but the dressing room conditions with non-equity were really bad they've been terrible i've been directly behind the stage like just like a piece of fabric yeah. was our dressing room and we we're sharing it you know all genders just sharing a dressing room together um i've yeah, we've had some, Austin and I have shared a dressing room with, you know, it was like four women, four men. And the only thing that separated us was a yeah, shower a, curtain. A little shower curtain. Um, and that but was a... I will say, the as you know, because you all have been there, it is kind of fun. Because yeah. all, everybody who's in the show, it's a good time. Everybody's laughing, cracking jokes about, like, it's a lot of fun, that environment. Because you're yeah. all together as like a family environment. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it makes for a lot of fun until someone's mad at somebody else and then it's, and then it's tense it's or something tense like, because it's too right. tight but yeah. the, you know when you get to a union house there are certain rules they have to follow and we'll talk about that on wednesday yeah um but um yeah so let's see that's, I, that's pretty pretty basically it. Yeah. yeah is those are the cons is that you don't get the benefits of the union you don't get the health insurance you don't get the pension contributions you don't get the rules protecting you yeah you don't get the pay you know, there's a lot of, <laughs> you know, all of that. But there are a lot of other benefits that don't get talked about with non-union yeah. um, that may be the right situation for you. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Depending on where you are in your career and where you want your career to go. Maybe you're someone that loves theater, but you really don't want to go all the way in. Then you have no reason to join the union. You can simply just do non-union work. But if you're someone who potentially wants to be, a, you know, you want to be a professional actor, this is the route, then you should be working towards joining the union. Yeah, I think that maybe the last thing we should talk about is just the path of, of non-union to union and when, how do you go from non-union mm -hmm. to union? Well, I, again, we're speaking to our experience and yeah. our stories and some of our peers are And we have stories. different stories. And we have different stories. Yeah. But, but for me, I was able to, I, I did non-union, just non-union work, because I was doing the music director pass slash actor, so I was doing kind of everything, yeah. and just kind of seeing what would happen. Um, so I was in non-union, 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 and then I got a book, I booked a tour, mm -hmm. and that tour bought my equity card, and I was able to just be, uh, be equity by the tour, because yeah. I had to be tour, because I was on an equity tour. So they, the producers paid for my equity card. I didn't have to do EMC weeks. I wasn't concerned about that path. I was just got my card booked and now I'm equity and that was it. So my path um, is that's a lot of people's story have that same story. There's yeah. people that go to school, they do the school thing, they get graduate from school, they get a Broadway show, they get a tour and they get their card and they yeah. don't understand the journey of the non-equity to EMC to um, EMC meaning equity member candidate. Yeah. Program. And that was the route that I took. Um, I have a question for you though. So when you, um, after you came back from the tour mm -hmm. and you hadn't been working in union houses, like was, was that difficult because now you're union and now you can't do non-union work. It was really difficult because luckily for me, Chicago is a great city for this where they have small, like I was speaking to earlier, they have small houses that have a, the bare, the very bottom equity contract, yeah. which is still like $150 a week, something ridiculous, but at least it's equity they contribute to health and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was able to work for some of those small companies, just get enough weeks to, to qualify for health insurance, which we're going to talk about Wednesday in the union video. Yeah. So I would qualify for health insurance by the skin of my teeth for one year. I just had to work like 12 weeks. So I was able to make it work, but it was hard. Yeah, really I feel hard. like that's why sometimes getting right into equity, it can work in your favor if you continue to get equity work, but it can also be to your detriment because you haven't made those connections and set the groundwork yet. I know we have a lot of friends, a lot of friends in Chicago where that happened to, mm -hmm. or people we know from New York or where they got a show, a tour, a, a I can speak to people I know, a specific kind of tour where they were maybe a guitar player that yeah. did a specific thing. They got their equity card. And then after that, they didn't work. They, they haven't act. They've done acting. They haven't done anything because they just weren't able to do. They kind of got hired for a niche thing. Yeah. And then they weren't able to kind of 
they didn't have anything else on the resume and they just weren't able to make it happen. So you really want to make sure you're established and you're ready to set out on your own footing. And um, yeah. that was kind of my traje trajectory. And it just happened by chance because my first booking for an, a union house as a non-union actor was kind of niche too, because I had my classical background. And so my first job was Porgy and Bess. They were looking for classical singers who were black. Boom, done. And I got a non-equity contract. Yeah. And uh, so then I established a relationship with a union house as a non-union actor, which means when I turn union, hey, I can go back to this house. They've worked with I've worked for them before. And um, I did another show with them as a non-union actor. And so now I have two credits at that house. And the same thing for another house I worked for. Um, I got that by happenstance because the same music director for Porgy and Bess was directing uh, a music directing a production of Hair. And so then I got to work at another union house as a non-union actor, learn the ropes and uh, build connections in that way. But I had to join the EMC program. So I remember when I was at Porgy and Bess, super, super green. I knew nothing about musical theater. I knew nothing about equity. I was as green as they come. All I could do was sing. And so uh, I was, uh, uh, the company manager came over and said, would you like to join EMC? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they explained it a little bit. And at the end, I was like, no, I don't think I need to do this. And they were like, you want to do this. And I was like, oh, okay. So I paid my hundred dollars. Now it's $200. It's $200. Yeah. At that, at that time it was $100. $200 but, to apply to be EMC. Yes. So I paid my, my fee and, uh, then they put me in the system and that's really all you have to do. And every time you work a union job, you build up weeks. So every week worked gets logged into the system until you reach 52 weeks. Now it's changed a little bit. It's now it's there's, 25 there's weeks. There's 25 for phase one. There's another 25 for phase two, something yeah. like that. We're that not wasn't experts. my experience. We it's have a changed. link. There's a link, in, <laughs> there's a link in the bio to all of the details that we're talking about to equity and to these things. So yeah. check that out if you want specifics about how this works. So it took me a few years. Um, I worked non-union work and union work. And every time I worked a union job, and if, you've, if you're from the Chicago market, uh, you'll know that the shows, they run, they, maybe you'll do a show for six weeks, maybe you'll do a show for three months. So it took me a while to work up to my 52 weeks. And just about when I was about to hit my 52 weeks, I was offered an equity contract. And so I went straight to uh, paying my initiation fee and um, becoming equity in that way. But along the way, I had worked both union houses and non-union houses. So that really helped me establish myself and I felt ready to make that step. What you want to do in summary, what you want to do, in, in my opinion, is build the resume. Just think of it like that. Mm -hmm. You need a resume. So if the resume for you is you went to school, you have all these things on this. You went to a great fine arts college. Yeah. You have all these great roles on there. You have worked with great directors at college, blah, blah, blah. Then you get offered an equity contract. It just kind of makes sense. That's your path. That's great. You have a great resume. Mm -hmm. But for me... I have no fine arts theater training. I didn't go, I don't have any roles on my resume at all when I was starting out. I didn't do theater. So that wouldn't make sense for me to just go to equity and then expect to get work because I have nothing on my resume that says I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So for me, the path had to be the bottom of non-equity, building up roles, connections, building the resume. Think of it like that. Then as Adrian said, equity houses. And then when you get the equity job, you still have the resume to kind of back up the next job. So mm -hmm. they're like, oh, you got that equity job, but you also were built. Okay, I see your journey. Mm -hmm. But as we spoke to earlier, if you're just a one-off, like if you just go equity on one random tour and you haven't don't have any resume, you may find that you have a difficult time continuing to get work. Yeah. So think of it like that. Really work on whatever your journey is. It can be individual to you, but just think of it in terms of your resume building how long that means staying at non-union theater, then trying to get into the hybrid houses, yeah. the equity houses, and then going equity. So 
it's really specific to you. We can't tell you what to do, but. Yeah, we hope this helps. <laughs> um, our journeys were different, as you can see, yeah. and your journey will be different as well. But we hope that this video helps you to, to realize that if you still are non-union, there's a lot of pros to that and yeah. to, you know, bank on that and live in that as long as you can until you're ready to take the plunge. And we have a subscriber shout out to give today. Yes. Today's shout out goes to April Grant. Thank you so much for being a supporter of our channel and for joining us on 32barcut.com in the orchestra. orchestra, the orchestra level. That is awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that you're enjoying the curtain call and all the perks of being an orchestra subscriber level person, member. Yes. <laughs> and um, we'll be shouting out uh, our fans every week, every episode, because we just want to show our appreciation and we, we see you, we appreciate all the feedback and all the comments and just building a community together is really important to us. Yes, thank you so much, April. And for uh, the rest of you, don't forget to like, subscribe with the notification bell on, yeah. and we will see you Wednesday when we talk about union and uh, actors equity and what it's like. Yes. What it means. Pros, pros cons, cons. Should you do it? What? All of the things. Of course, we are equity members, so yeah. uh, we're pro. But we'll give you all the details. Yeah. All right. See you Wednesday. Bye.